very painful story I read somewhere. It was the story of a very wealthy man who came out one day in front of his house and saw a, a poor beggar by the side of his fence. This poor beggar was exposed under the cold weather. He had no clothes on. So this wealthy man saw this poor beggar. Immediately he saw him, he had this sympathy. He approached him and said, how come you have no clothes on? And you expose your bare body under this terrible weather. Don't worry. Let me get you a blanket to cover yourself from this cold. The moment you told this man, let me get you a blanket, this poor beggar became hopeful and was happy. And this worthy man went in. And then so many activities in the house took over his attention. And he forgot. The poor beggar, he made a promise. He forgot. He didn't come out again. Now, the next day, this man came out. He has already forgotten about the beggar. No need to look at that spot. He saw the beggar yesterday and saw the man lying down. He thought the man was sleeping. And coming close, he touched the man and discovered that the man was stone dead. The poor beggar was already dead. This wealthy man was surprised. What happened? And then he looked around and saw the note the poor beggar left for him. And the poor beggar said, When I had no sweater or blanket, I had myself well. I had the strength of myself well to hold on. But the moment you made me a promise of giving me a blanket to cover myself from the cold, I lost myself away. All my hope, all my trust was built on that promise. And I waited. The promise didn't come. And I have lost myself away. I couldn't hold on. That was how the man died. Many times we make promises to people. And people will build their life, their hope, their everything upon that promise. Most times, we don't come true. We don't fulfill the promise. There are many of us here who have made promises to people. And the promise we made to such people, made them to even make some sacrifices, forgo certain opportunities, just because of that promise. Only for you to turn around and tell the person, I'm sorry. I know the story of a beautiful young girl a man promised her marriage when she was 20 years old. Very beautiful girl. The man told her, I'm going to marry you. You are the only woman I can spend the rest of my life with. And this young girl believed him. And before long, the man told her that he'll be traveling outside the country to search for greener pasture. The man traveled. The young girl was waiting for the man. Very beautiful girl. In her prime, and suitors were coming. Suitors were coming because a man had made her a promise. She was turning the suitors down. Within the space of 10 years, this young girl had more than 20 suitors. And she turned all of them down because she was waiting for a man who made her a promise. And the man spent about 10 years outside the country. Eventually, the man came back. When the man came back, he saw the he didn't even inform the girl that he was back. When the girl discovered the man who promised her marriage was back, she went to see the man. He took a whole lot of coming and going before she could see the man. Eventually, when she saw the man, the man told her, well, I need a younger girl. You are too old for me now. And this young girl spent her youth, spent her prime, spent everything waiting for you because you made a promise. Only for you to turn back and tell her, you are too old for me. Let us know that our promises to people can be life-changing, can change somebody's destiny. People have sold their business 
sold their property because somebody told them, come over to this country. I am going to help you to become somebody. What are you doing here? Person sold up everything. Traveled. But getting there, the person that promised you heaven and earth was nowhere to be found. And the person was left stranded. Let us empower our ways today. Let people who trust us because we have made promises to them never be disappointed. Can you say what God said today? That no words that come from my mouth shall return empty and dead. Always fulfills. Because we don't know that in most cases, people build their hope. People build their trust. People build everything around our promises. We called a young boy and told him, go and learn business. When you are done, I'm going to support you to begin. Maybe this young boy had something doing. Maybe because your promise came, automatically he changed the direction of his life and followed your promise. He went in to learn trade. After spending maybe two or three years or four learning the trade, and come south. You start telling him up and down. Then he go to the country. Boy. And then at the end of the day, what thing comes out of it. Then I don't have promised somebody. Now go and register for Jambu. Go and register for this. I'm going to sponsor you. The person took the promise. Spent sleepless nights reading for Jambu. Doing everything. Making sacrifices going for lesson, even spending the little money he had on him. And at the end of the day, he made a very good result. Did you come true for the person? Did you fulfill your promise? It's a challenge Jesus is giving us, God is giving us today. Let us empower our ways. Let our promises be so strong. Because that is the word. I don't know. There is a man who said that there is, there is no way we can Tell the health of our no, there's no way, way we can tell the health of anybody's soul except by what we say. People can hold you to what you have said, even though the person cannot see your heart. But the person believes you. And it's always very painful. It's always very painful. I know a young girl who couldn't take it. On the day the man was having a wedding with another girl. Young lady came to the church, armed with gun. Gone the man down and killed herself. Gone the man down and killed herself. You cannot take somebody's life, bring the person in the middle of nowhere, and leave the person stranded. And then for you, it doesn't matter. The young girl you told you will marry at the age of 20, waited for you 10 years. After 10 years, you told her she's too old for you. But because of your promise, she was turning down suitors. Should have married her when she was younger. But because of you, she turned down every other. If you are such a person who have made such promises to people, I want to beg you today stop. Stop. If you can't help people, at least don't distract them. Don't even hurt them. Allow them to be. It's already bad enough. You don't want to help. But to go out of your way and distract that person, change the course or trajectory of that person's life by making empty promises. That is, you are, you are, you are adding salt to injury. Because if not for that promise, maybe the person believing that no help is coming to me any, from any, anywhere, the person can muster every strength and every energy to fight for his or her destiny. So when you make promises that are not willing to fulfill, you are distracting whoever you are making strong promises. You are putting a stumbling block on that person's path. Because many people will build their trust on that. There are many people today whose life have been, that is, shattered and destroyed. They can't get around anything again. Because you made a promise that you never fulfilled. And the person built his or her entire life on the power of that promise. And eventually, at the end of the day, you fail to come true. I have listened to stories of people who started a journey, who started a program, who started a, a, a particular a, a work because somebody made a promise and said, do this and 
going to help you when you complete. The person will even go and borrow money. The person will even go and do certain things just to do that. When the person has provided what you asked of him and waiting for you, you begin to run the person up and down. It's very painful. And it can be life shattering for many people. It can be life shattering to many people. So let us know this today. There is a tribute of moral distinction in the same that a man's word is his bond. Let people believe you. Let people hold you to your words. And then be a man of integrity. Be a man of honor by keeping your words to people. If you can't, don't worry. Nobody will hold you for not making any promise. Tell the person from the one, I don't think I can be there. I don't think I can do this. The person knows that I don't have anybody to help me. But to make promises. And then the person will build his entire life on that promise. And then only for you to turn around and begin to change the story or they are about. It can be terrible. And then the gospel we listen to today is also another powerful message. Many times we hear very inspiring messages in the house of God. We are so touched. We are so moved. But the moment we leave the church's door, it ends there. It ends there. But we all know that faith comes from hearing. The things you hear can change the direction of your life. Can give you a new outlook about life. So today, the, what Jesus is telling us today, let us not just be the hearers of the word, let us also become the doers of the word. A man called the Ignatius of um, Loyola he was a military officer who sustained a serious injury in the field of war and found himself in the hospital. Why in the hospital? This man was requesting for romance literature to read because that was the kind of literature he enjoys reading. He was asking those in the prison, in the, in, the, in the hospital, can you find me any romantic novel, anything about love, sex, and them, them, and friendship? They searched the whole hospital ward. They couldn't find any. The only thing they could find there was Bible. He gave him a Bible. He dropped the Bible. He couldn't read it. But when he was bored <coughs> to hell, that he needed something to read, he locked up to pick the Bible and started reading he discovered a, a new type of literature he has never read. What he was reading there was so moving, so life-challenging, so transforming. That was what marked the turning point in the life of this Ignatius Loyola. The passages he read in the Bible marked a turning point in his life and gave him a new outlook. The same thing was also what obtained the life of St. Augustine. Augustine read a particular passage of the Bible and everything about his life changed. We have heard many beautiful words, very transforming words. Did it yield any fruit in our life? These are so searching questions we should be asking ourselves today. We need to be doers of the word and not just hearers of the words. The Bible is never in short supply of powerful words that can change our life if we are willing to become doers of the word. Let us not pick and choose the one to do and the one not to do, the one to believe and the one not to believe. And today, Jesus made it so clear that blessed are your ear, for they hear what you are hearing. Many long to hear and never heard. Yeah, many long and didn't. There was a time Jesus was rebuking the people of Bethsaida, the children and name them. He told them, if what we are done for you, we are done for people of Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented. Jonah preached to the people of Nineveh. They repented wearing sackcloth. But something greater than Jonah is in your midst. What have you done about it? The queen of south came all the way from south to listen to the wisdom of Solomon. Yet something greater than Solomon is in your midst. Nothing to show for it. And he told them, on the judgment day, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah will rise up in judgment seat and condemn your people. The point is this, that opportunities for repentance, opportunities to better our life that come our way, if we don't utilize them, they will turn around to become judgment upon us. We pray that opportunities
opportunities that we have in life to better our life not end up to become a judgment upon us. Let us become the doers of the West and not just the hearers of the West. And then another extreme I would like us to watch. Because when we say keeping your word, some may take it to another extreme. One very important example is what happened in the case of Herod. Herod, who was under the influence of wine, made a terrible promise by telling the young lady, Salome, ask me anything in this world, even half of my kingdom, I will give it to you. And the woman came and requested for head of John the Baptist. And then the man was, he couldn't bear to disappoint, uh, embarrass himself in the midst of some other dignitaries and kings who came to his palace. And he stupidly granted that request. That is not the kind of request. Not when you make people promises that are unreasonable, and then you think you are more bound to fulfill it. No, that's not what you are meaning. There are promises that are reasonable enough that should be fulfilled. And then it's also bothered about people who go to borrow money from people. There are people who go to somebody and say, please, can you lend me so and so I'm going to pay you so and so time. The person will hold you to your word and give you the money. You stop picking the person's call. You will not even call that person to tell the person, please, give me a little time. I'm going to pay up. You will forget everything about the money. There are people like that. If you are such people, God is addressing you today. What made God to make this kind of claim or post is for us to know that we don't need to chip in our ways. Ways are powerful. Ways are powerful. On the abundance of hearts, the mouth speaks. Meaning that ways reveal the health of your soul. Ways reveal the depth of your soul. Ways can tell people the kind of person you are.